And our last guest for the show today is Kathleen O'Connor Ives. And I'm going to let you, Kathleen, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your perf your professional biography. Sure, absolutely. I'm currently on the Newburyport City Council as a counselor at large. I'm in the middle of my third term, and I'm an attorney at law. I've had background experience. Uh, my first job out of college was working on Al Gore's campaign for president oh, wow. in Florida. Oh, wow. I started in New Hampshire in the Londonderry area went to Massachusetts, the general, and then the Florida recount. And I also worked wow. um, on a gubernatorial campaign in Massachusetts, worked for a planning agency, practiced law, and I uh, recently started my own small business. It's an online retail business focused on all natural products because of my concern about uh, the, the low bar for consumer products currently in America. Wow. Okay, so you have some history here in uh, in the political uh, in the political world, and uh, so you want you're competing here for a Senate seat. Right. Um, there's a, a ballot question, uh, not in all communities, but in some communities, uh, and uh, the question is, and maybe you can explain why this might even be important to cit uh, citizens in the first Essex. Mm -hmm. The question is, should corporations, and I think the target is really large transnational corporations like the big oil industry or the banking industry or that sort of thing, rather than a small incorporated uh, law practice like you might have or a medical practice or something like that, mm -hmm. should corporations have the same legal rights as human beings under the Constitution? And I wonder if you could explain maybe why that would be a valid question, why citizens would be concerned and how that might apply and what your position in particular, what your position would be on that. For those communities <clears throat> that were able to organize and get enough signatures to have a ballot question, I think it's a very good thing. Hmm. I believe that the vast majority of people in our state Senate district do not believe that corporations are people. And this gives them an opportunity to formally voice that position. Hmm. Fortunately, at the uh, state Senate level, and it was um, continued at the, um, at the House level, mm -hmm. that was approved. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity where both Republicans on Beacon Hill and Democrats were able to unify and agree on this very important issue. Mm -hmm. I think it was a huge disservice to the American public to have a Supreme Court say that corporations are people. I've studied corporate um, chartering closely um, at school, and mm -hmm. you can see that the, the development of the corporation to be what it is today mm -hmm. is a massive deviation from how it was originally supposed to be. And I think that like anything else, large organizations become corrupt and um, want power. Mm -hmm. And right now we see that actually impacting our very elections that impact who will represent us in public office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to imply that corporations are corrupt, it's just that their bottom their their constituency is their shareholder mm -hmm. and so their their mission is as profit and uh, uh, if there are damages that can be externalized to to normal everyday average human beings so mm -hmm. um, let me give you an e example of uh, there's something called uh, genetically engineered food mm -hmm. and um, the former vice president of one of these companies, Monsanto, is currently the director of the FDA. Mm -hmm. um, and in California, they're trying to get a food labeling um, requirement for genetically engineered food. I wonder if you could speak to that a little right. bit. I, too, don't think that a corporation is innately corrupt by no means. Right. But I believe that the way that these entities have been able to develop themselves and change the law to serve to their benefit yeah. against the public interest is what's problematic. Okay. So in this specific example of Monsanto, mm -hmm. you have a company who has profited mm -hmm. and focuses on genetically modified food, mm -hmm. genetically modified seeds, and mm -hmm. the distribution of that throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So if we have an individual who had a professional career 
focused on profiteering mm -hmm. for this one particular company, mm -hmm. that's fine. But mm -hmm. the conflict of interest mm -hmm. to be the head of the FDA is mm -hmm. massive. Mm -hmm. And am I surprised that you know, folks don't want to see genetically modified foods without labeling, that's a very reasonable thing. Mm -hmm. We deserve to be informed consumers, mm -hmm. and the science and the verdict is still out as to the health implications for the consumption right. of genetically modified foods. Right. So, um, there's, a, there's a, another example might be um, in, the, in the banking industry. Um, we had a huge meltdown in 2008. Mm -hmm. We have a, 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 a the uh, money that was supposed to be the power in the power of Congress and coinage of money was supposed to be in the power of Congress was privatized into a federal a federal what they call the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor does it have reserves, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. I wonder, what, do you have any thoughts about monetary policy and and uh, like say the meltdown of 2008 or mm -hmm. um, pulling back the Glass Steagall Act in in 1995 mm -hmm. under the Clinton administration? Or I do. I think that in this capacity that I'm campaigning right now and to mm -hmm. be a state senator, there's a role at the state senate level to be a leader mm -hmm. regarding financial policy. Mm -hmm. And a good example is that, you know, we need more transparency. Mm -hmm. We need, everyone benefits from that. Mm -hmm. And on the city council, we're subject to the open meeting law. Mm -hmm. And residents expect to know why people voted and, and when it happened so they can respond in turn. Mm -hmm. When it comes to something like the Federal Reserve, we would greatly benefit from improved auditing mm -hmm. and greater transparency that mm -hmm. could only serve to benefit the situation. Mm -hmm. And I do believe, like you mentioned um, with the uh, Glass-Siegel Act, I think that we need to make greater efforts to create a very stark line between investment banking mm -hmm. and personal banking yeah. because personal mm -hmm. banking you know, we, we live and rely on to meet our financial needs versus investment banking, which is gambling with people's futures. Right, right. And we saw a huge, huge meltdown as a result of that. People lost their homes. Mm -hmm. um, somebody I know from Methuen was working for AIG, got laid off, lost his retirement, lost his uh, uh, pension, um, and... Uh, you know, uh, that's right here in the first Essex. Oh, absolutely. I think that everyone has felt the impact mm -hmm. of the deregulation mm -hmm. that resulted in the, the banking crisis and the mm -hmm. mortgage crisis. And I will be a strong advocate for consumer protection as the next state senator. Nice. Well, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you for having and, me, Dan. Yeah, good luck in the race. And thank you. Uh, after the primary, maybe we can meet again. I would love that. Yeah, thank great. you. All right.